On this episode of A State of Control, we talk about the 2018 edition of Crestron Masters, what it's all about, what attendees and instructors get, and we get an insider's view from diamond level certified Crestron programmers. That and more on A State of Control. The network for the AV industry. What are you listening to? This. This is AV. This. This. This is AV Nation. This is AV Nation. A state of control. A state of control, episode 45. Meet the gems. Support for AV Nation is brought to you by SDVOE, the platform for network AV. Welcome to A State of Control, an AV Nation podcast that highlights the control, automation, and programming aspects of the audiovisual industry. My name is Steve Greenblatt. I'm your host. Thanks for joining us today. Today, we're going to talk about a, a special event that happened recently in, in the industry, and that was a collection of certified programmers across the country and even across the world congregated in Connecticut and were attending Crestron's Masters event. This is an annual event where Crestron shares some of the trends, some of the latest technology, and also uses certified programmers to help engage the community and to educate. And uh, with me are a few of those attendees, and some even were instructors. But first and foremost, before we get started, I want to introduce my partner at State of Control, and his name is Uncle Richie. He is Rich Fergosa. How are you, Rich? I'm doing great. And of course, as it happens on the West Coast, the minute we start recording, I've got background noise. But So I'm going to give well, mellow West Coast greetings to everybody, and uh, glad to see this uh, collection of characters. It's uh, Sorry I missed seeing these guys, but I'm looking forward to hearing hearing all of their information. And we could affectionately call them gems because they're all diamond pro programmers. And uh, sorry for the crazy joke, but first I'll introduce uh, Dave Hatz. He is a familiar face on the show. How are you today, Dave? Hey, Dave's doing from awesome. AVI Thanks Systems. Thanks for having us all. Thanks for joining us. Next, another familiar face, uh, Bernard Morgan from ICS Plus. How are you, Bernard? Doing well. Great to be back on the show. Thanks. Thanks for being here. And last but not least, if you've ever attended a master's, you know him. His name is John Otteson from Crestron. How are you, John? Thanks for joining us. Doing all right. Thanks for having me. Well, glad you're here. So, so Crestron Masters is a big thing, and, and it is a, uh, an event that almost can't be missed by Crestron programmers uh, if you're certified. I, th you know, I, I, I think it's safe to say that it almost trumps Infocom from the perspective of, of a programmer as far as being able to be engaged and have some opportunity to learn and to, to also be involved in a community. So Rich, I'm going to start with you. Um, from your perspective, and, and even as an outsider for somebody who, who may not have attended, um, how do you feel about the, the value that Crestron Masters provides and, and, what, and what makes it so special? Well, it's, it's, it's a multi-pronged answer really. I mean, it's, it's, it's like with anything. I mean, obviously we have trade associations and one of the things that I've always, I, I've always espoused is that, you know, with, with our get togethers, it's a perfect time for everybody to get together in the same room and to be able to exchange information um, and get in front of people and ask questions that you don't normally have or get information. Crestron Masses is a perfect example of that. It is one of the only times um, of the year that in North America and then also obviously coming up in Europe that um, people who are day in and day out programming these systems are able to get in front of engineers, instructors, um, and everybody who, who actually has an answer has, can give you um, information that you may not have had before. Um, but more importantly, um, you know, the fraternity and, and, and sorority, I get, obviously, you know, I, I love that there's men and women programmers that are at Masters, um, of people who are going through the same thing that you are day in and day out. And there's a lot to be said, you know, because um, I think somebody said a couple of days ago, you know, the, the, the 
odd thing about control system programming is for the most part, it's a solitary act. And it's very easy to get isolated on an island. And even though you're working with other trades and, every, and, and, and other team members, it's still a pretty solitary act. You and a computer or whatever you're using, whether you're offsite or onsite. And so there's a lot to be said about being amongst um, people who are, are fighting the good fight along with you. Um, and, and also, you know, it's a concentrated blast. I mean, it's, if you're ready to drink from the fire hose on any subject, uh, you know, those, that's available for you. And it, it's, you know, it's a true master's class. And so, you know, it, it, I mean, there's no mistake why the phrase is used. It's an opportunity of people who are at, um, you know, the top level of their skills to not have to worry about basics, but to really work on, on refining and pushing through to the next level. So again, it's, it's, you hear from me, you know, education, education, I'm, I'm, I'm always for it. So. And so Dave, uh, for, from your perspective and, and somebody who's actually been involved uh, over the years and, and, and all, and been on both sides of the coin, you know, how, what, what are some of the key takeaways that, that you find and go into an event like this? Well, I think it's, you know, Rich, Rich alluded to a lot of it, that it's, in my mind, it's almost 50-50. You know, half of it's the content and learning what's new, you know, getting in front of those product managers, hearing about, you know, this year, there were some, some trends that are new to the programmers. And if someone wasn't there, yeah, they're going to hear hearsay, they're going to read on the blogs, and they're going to pick up, you know, n little nuggets along the way. But to really be immersed and to have a, tr you know, to have curriculum where you can choose the track you want. You know, when, when, when registering, a programmer this year was given an option of, I forget the exact number, but there were, there were you know, 37 or something like that options of courses that you couldn't take all of them because there's not enough time, but you can pick what pieces of information, which courses are really meaningful to you and your role, whether it's something you're doing day in and day out or something you're not familiar with and you want to learn about and become familiar with. So, you know, about half of the value that I always get is in that, that coursework, that learning what's new, learning, you know, how to do it better from Crestron, from the Diamond community, from all the instructors. The other half of it, though, you know, Rich talked about is, and I find huge value in, is that downtime. It's the time between sessions when you're collaborating. You know, everyone on this call, I've met through Crestron Masters. You know, I was, I was actually talking with, um, with someone while we were at the event, and I actually got my current job because of Crestron Masters, that I had formed a friendship with a programmer who worked for a, a firm who would you would typically think of as a competitor to mine. And when the firm I worked for went out of business, the first call I got was from this individual. And it, it really opened my eyes to, you know, if you think about it, in our industry, as I look at it, the sales reps are the ones that compete. They're the ones that are against each other trying to bring the business into a company. Once that job has been landed though, the programmers, the designers, those of us who are attending masters, we're not competitors. We're in the trenches together. We're all in there. And so to be able to share information, share the war stories, to sit down at a table with eight other people and just start chit chat. And all of a sudden it turns to shop talk and somebody throws out, hey, have you ever seen this? Have you ever done this? And someone will pop up. Oh, yeah, I wasn't able to get it to work either. Or, oh, yeah, I talked to so and so. Or, oh yeah, here's exactly what I did to fix it. Those can really be valuable to me as a programmer because I go back and can do my job more efficiently. I might be able to solve a problem in my role for my clients that I otherwise wouldn't have had an answer to. And so it's not just going to class. It's learning the complete skill set and the complete conversation around what we do. And it, it's something that, you know, I hold really valuable, you know, in my career and, and in this industry. I, I, I think that you, that's very, very well put. And I, and, and uh, I, I want to kind of go a little bit fur, further with that. Bernard, for, from your perspective, do you think the most learning is, done in the in the room or, or outside the room and 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 also how how much can be gained from actually in, instructing well i, I think it, 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 to, to be able to instruct the class at this level you have to become a master of it and one thing crestron does um to for you to be the instructor of the class they pick an area that you are not an expert on so in order to teach the class you have to know the material two to three times better because you have to be able to 
ask the questions that come out of left field that you wouldn't necessarily think that would apply to that. So, you know, one of the interesting things they do when you say, hey, we come teach this class is they take a topic that they know that you're not a master of. And you have to do the research. You have to do the backstory. You have to figure out the backstory. And you have to know how to more importantly just not tell it, but you have to know how to apply it. And I think that process there means that you've learned – you have to learn so much more and so much diversity in it to apply that specific topic to the community because at the end of the day, we are – our audience is certified programmers. And I think you know where you gain the most knowledge there, it, it's kind of – it's almost split in thirds, right? There's obviously the time that you are in gathering the information amongst the colleagues, amongst in the training class itself. But then there's the downtime when you're meeting with you know, individual people and you're sitting down to grab lunch and there's a, like Dave said, you strike up a conversation at a table. And the third thing is actually in the keynotes, the, the future roadmap of where they're heading and what's coming down the pipe so you know where you need to sharpen your tools. So I think those are the three areas right there that you, you, you learn the most at. So John, I kind of wanted you to weigh in on this last. For, from your perspective and from Crestride's perspective, is this what you expect the attendees to be getting? And also, what, what how from uh, a, an instructor or how, how even from a curriculum standpoint do you go about really instructing an audience like this? That's a fantastic set of questions. First of all, when we started this, the hope and goal was to create a, a mechanism by which we could keep the world up with what we're doing, right? Let's, let's take the, the, the top levels and, and introduce ideas. So there's, part of this is the feedback we get back. When you talk about drinking from a fire hose, right? You, you're, you're, you should see what it's like from our side of this whole thing. Yet yeah, this year we had better than 1,200 of you all feeding back, and all kinds of different feedback, of course, but like for what we should be doing, are we in the right direction? The other part of it is, what do we expect you guys to get out of it? Well, I think we were expecting to educate. I didn't, I can't tell you being from the very beginning of this, I never imagined, one, we'd have over 1,000 people at one of these things. Two, I never imagined the level of interactivity you guys have the exchange of information, both from us and back to you in the class, but amongst each other. Just walking around, I learn all kinds of things. Stepping into conversations is really interesting because you, you pick up, it's like, oh, wow, these guys are really out there and they're changing information and they're doing it in a free form. Uh, from a curriculum point of view, man, that became, that's become more and more challenging. And the beauty part of this whole diamond have to teach thing is it's allowed us one to expand what we're able to offer but the challenges in the curriculum are okay we just don't have enough people <laughs> we got a thousand subjects and 40 people so it's one of those kind of challenges it was coming up with a with a curriculum is something that you want to build over time like uh, I, I use a lot of my class series, for example. If you attend my classes over five years, I always reflect back on those classes that I taught before because they were building blocks. They have to stand alone, but at the same time, you've got to be able to, to keep building the information of the programming community so that they have more to feed on. That's really where those challenges lie. Very interesting. Well, and that's and that's a huge point too, because you know if you look at masters back in you know back in the day in the beginning, it was a group of thirty to fifty of us in two conference rooms with a fixed set of topics. It was you know what John, you and team put together was what everyone heard, and you you would go from year to year and you would pick up the content, and in the last number of years when we you know it's transformed to this idea of you can choose the topics that are appropriate to you. Having that, that curric that, those levels of curriculum where there's the 101, the beginner class, the 201, the 301, you know, having different levels of competency so that someone new coming into the group can get that same knowledge that we got five, six years ago because they haven't been exposed to it. And then also keeping it so that the most advanced person has the more advanced knowledge. It, it, it really is that curriculum concept is, has been what made it so valuable. 
And also keep in mind the breadth of product and what the systems are doing now has grown exponentially in the last 10 years, 12 years. I mean, I could never imagine, you know, the first, you know, continuing education was, was called when I went to the first one. The topics we're covering now, I could have never foreseen that we we're doing that back then. Just I, I couldn't even fathom some of the things we do today. I think there, there's a lot of value too in, in being able to, to specialize and, and be able to, to customize a class to a particular audience and be able to go deeper too. So I think there's a lot of value seen in that. Now, this year was a little bit different too because we also had the design track. And that I think threw an interesting wrinkle in things because if you were somebody who was maybe managing programming or managing programmers and had that certification, you had the ability to learn and and be able to kind of get a different perspective on things rather than getting a little bit more in the weeds, if you will. Well, I think that's great also because you think now the ecosystem has grown so broad, bringing the design community into the into this as well shows how diverse the the Crestron ecosystem has developed over the years and the different foot how large the footprint is and the different types of systems that are there because now the ecosystem is so large now there's specialties inside of design that when it when it refers to the control system itself so that just shows how diverse the footprint is at this point and being able to specialize on where you need to be able to go is, is enormous because now that you can do the product offering so broad that you could actually have specialties inside the product family at this point. Well, yeah. I would say, you know, if you think if you think about the designers, you know, for for a, from a programmer's standpoint, if the design isn't isn't right, how much harder does that make your life? So you know, introducing this idea that you know not just a master programmer is important, but a master designer somebody who really knows the ins and the outs of the equipment they're working with, knows the capabilities, knows how to stretch those capabilities, but also knows where the limits are and how to be careful around that. That's immensely valuable to me as a programmer because it means that the designs that come up across my desk might actually work better, might, be, you know, might uh, be closer to being possible. And I don't have to pull out quite as many of those, those miracles to get, you know, to pull something off. And so, you know, I think it's I think it's a great initiative. And I think it's interesting now because now you can truly say you switched to hat. I used to be the programmer. Let me sit in a couple design classes. And then now you can have the designer sit in a couple programming classes. And then at the end of that, you guys can compare notes. And that perspective from both sides really helps push systems forward overall. Well, and a big thing to consider, too. I mean, obviously, when Masters started, and, and, you know, what we've always been talking about lately, you know, 20 years ago, control system programmers and control systems were part of the audiovisual system, right? As part of the deployment of AV services, completely different. 20 years later, we're now a greater part of the technology offerings that are going on in a residence or in a business. So it is a completely different landscape. And it was one of the big messages of masters this year is that, with designers and with programmers, we're, we're dealing less and less with dedicated control um, languages in terms of, you know, we're not using RS-232 as much anymore. You're not using Relay as much. You're not using serial. You're not using analog voltages. You know, we live in an IP, IT world. And what opening up to designers and in addition to the programmers is the fact that we are becoming part of a greater technology market and that it's important for us to see how we're integrating within that, which is established at this point, even though it's a younger market, technically, it's a far more established and pervasive one. And so I think that it allows in this situation for us to, to learn how to better play with the other kids <laughs> in the sandbox. Uh, uh, yeah. uh, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, and for me, the designer track, which I didn't have anything to do with the creation of it, and I thought it was actually a, a, a brilliant stroke, because one of the things that we get back or that I hear constantly from programmers is we say, hey, we need to do this, we have to do these things, is that it's not in the spec, or I, you know, I don't get that language. So creating something that is a homogenous environment by which everybody can hear, see, and speak the same language to me, I think is completely worth 
all the effort and all the interchange. That, and I think it, demystifying our world to the designers and demystifying their world to us, having sat in both chairs, has absolute value to us as an industry. I, and I, I was going to actually kind of share one of my experiences in one of the classes was that the instructor said, hey, designers, the guy sitting next to you may be a programmer. If you have a question, ask them. And if and maybe you guys could work together and, and this is a better way of doing things rather than designing and programming being two separate entities. Um, so I'll, I'll kind of bring us back to the, the idea of certification. And, uh, and and maybe I'll start with you, John. It, it, so we have two, we, we, we have now veteran diamond programmers What's next? Is, uh, is, is there something beyond that? And, and what, um, what, what, how, how does that certification look like to, to, to the outsiders? And, and you know, the, I'm sure it has tremendous value to, to Crestron. Yeah, me, um, myself and uh, Jim Pope, who I'll mention being the being Jim Pope being the first myself being one of the second ones along with uh, my august colleagues here on the phone. Uh, I think one uh, retirement. Uh, sorry, <laughs> kidding. Uh, you know, the concept of professor emeritus. This is an important thing. Um, I think at some point, some of us have to age out. And that's that's just a fact, right? We have to make room for the up and coming. The, the cool thing about this whole tiered thing, and especially with the diamonds is, is we can now begin to expand the breadth of the classes we offer based on demand, right? Because we have a whole bunch of new, um, new programmers, but then we also get the fact that some of us are, have been around for a while. And we've got to let the younger ones go. So like, uh, we were joking that, uh, we're now referring to Mr. Pope as professor emeritus, which I think is a fantastic concept. I don't know what the next one will be called, but I think that there has to be a continuing level. But I also think that there has to be a point where maybe you move into a counselor type position, right? Letting the other people, because we can't keep taking up the time that, that other students need to be able to teach a class to get their certification. And there's a flood coming. Just look at the number of goals that we have that are coming up. Um, Diamonds are starting to populate. We did two this year. I think we got another couple in, in Europe. Um, so I think for some of us, I think the next level is, is becoming part of the, creating an upper level organization that helps determine that curriculum. That way the community is driving the curriculum. Crestron provides the space and the, and the, and the technology and the knowledge, but the, eventually you guys, the community, I, I myself as a member, we begin to govern what we're teaching and make sure that it's tiered, that it's not, I, I hate the word regulated, but consistent. You know what I mean? So that we know that a silver should learn this so that they can be successful at gold. And we know golds need to know this so that they can be successful at diamond. And hey, why haven't you taken your diamond? You're, you, you've got the years in. Oh, it's the crowd thing that you've got. Okay, well, hey, you know, let's get you through that whole crowd fear thing and get you up there, that kind of stuff. So I think that's what the next level looks like for those of us who are who have been are long in the tooth. I, I like that, and I, it almost sounds like a sense of of professional development as part of the the this maturation. Um, Dave, I, I I saw a lot of familiar faces as you alluded to, and and as John's alluding to, you know the the age is getting older. How are we? Get going to start to backfill because unfortunately we didn't see too many unfamiliar faces. Well, that's, and that's, that's the key is, you know, that, you know, there's, there's, when we started this, the group of us who are, you know, some of the gold and the platinum and the diamond, we started coming to this long before master's class was tied to certification. When we started coming to this, it was purely just about continuing education. And so now you have, I'll call it sort of a mix. Some people are there motivated by just the continuing education. Some are there motivated much more by the, the fact that it's tied into certification and it's part of that. And obviously everyone gets value from both, but, you know, but everyone has a little different motivation for being there. 
And so, you know, I think as, as we bring in and we continue to, to, to strive to bring, you know, you know, younger people into the, into the, into, into the programming community, as well as just advance those who are, you know, who aren't yet certified or are just freshly certified and advance them through and, and encourage them that there are benefits to it. You know, it, it's, it's a constant, you know, challenge because the other thing you've got is you've got different generations there. And, you know, and it's there, there, you know, it's, it's a different ball game when you look at, you know, I'll, I'll call it the millennials, you know, that there are some phenomenal programmers who are, you know, just out of college in their first few years of their professional career. But for them, you know, I've talked to a number of them. They look at, you know, the diamond certification and say, I don't need that because that's, they can't even conceive thinking, you know, 10, 12 years down the road they're just worried about what's going on right now. And so, you know, it's a different mindset that they have. They could, you know, they'll still get a lot of value from the certification track from coming to masters, but it is a group that we need to look at differently and, and consider that we have that group along with, I'll call Bernard and my generation who, you know, have been in this a long time. We're all looking to get the same value out of the program, out of the classes, but we have different ways of approaching it. And, you know, and, and it, it's a continuing challenge. And I think that's one of the great, one of the great things is by when Crestron put the diamond program in place, now you have a pool of different instructors you can pull from to help target that audience as the need for different classes or curriculum come, in, come about. Now you have a pool of instructors to kind of switch it up. Because I think one of the interesting things is when you have a Crestron representative in a, a non, a, let's call it a, a integrator or CSP teaching a class together, the perspective from the manufacturer and the people who are do, uh, in the integrator CSP to present the material makes it a, a really good topic to have conversations around and that really broadens the audience at that point to help bridge that gap that you just talked about Dave. Well, the other thing I'll, I'll, I throw out in my classes personally is, a, you know, and it's an approach that I've been really successful with is approaching it as, Hey guys, I don't work for Crestron. I'm here to tell you about the topic you signed up for, but I'm going to give you some, of, I'm not going to give you all just unicorns and rainbows. Certainly, I, you know, I want to make sure you understand the product or the platform, but I'll also help you through some of the places where it might have challenges because we unfortunately know Crestron's not quite perfect. Shh, John, I didn't say that, but, you know, there, there are times where things aren't, you know, aren't perfect. And so, you know, I, as someone who am in the, in the field, you know, you, Bernard, as well, I'm, I know do this, of here are some things I have found to work around challenges that you might have so that not just am I doing a sales pitch on the product or the platform, but I'm really helping you better use it and better benefit from it in the field. And I really think that helps broaden the audience at that point. I also believe it validates the entire process, having you guys teach exactly to both of your points. That validation, here's the community. It's not Crestron pushing a line. It's you guys educating, and it validates what we're trying to do. I would say as far as the the way things have been portrayed and and, ha and and how that information has been put out there, one of the things that I got some enjoyment out of is you guys sitting on a panel and basically talking is like we are here and sharing sharing both your thoughts and your experiences and and that was tremendously valuable and it was a kind of a way of formulate formalizing some of this these types of conversations. So, Rich, I'm going to wrap it up with you. Um, moving forward, what do you think? How do you think the industry would best be served by these types of events? And 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 you know, is that is this something that is is you know localized to only a big manufacturer, or or are these these types of conferences, or, or uh, you know, something that you think we'll we'll see more of? I mean, I think we're seeing a trend uh, to this uh, for the past few years anyway. Um, I, I know that, you know, some other manufacturers have made that decision to say, you know, we are opening up larger training centers in major geographic areas in North America and in Europe and, you know, and, 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 um, opening out. I think that um, we are seeing how the scope and how our projects work together. 
um, is changing. We see how technology is changing. We see how the workforce is changing. I think Dave brought up a great, great uh, point. You know, how do we keep engaged? And, and obviously the best way to keep somebody engaged is for them to be together, to experience being with like-minded professionals, creating professional development arenas, because um, you're going to get the most bang for your buck. That's, that's always going to be it. From the business side, as a business owner, <laughs> the flip side always becomes how do I, how can I account for my staff being gone and either the lost opportunity costs or the project costs or everything that go along with it? Because there's also a reality, you know, a brother's still got to eat, you know, over and over and over, right? Um, and what I love that Crestron has been actively working on, especially the past two years with masters, is seeing that and with technology and saying, you maybe couldn't make it. Maybe it's not part of your certification path, but here's the information in the classes. So at least you didn't miss out on everything. And if nothing else, that becomes an opportunity with, like Dave was saying, a junior programmer who they may be in for two years at some say You can say, look, tell you what, you didn't make, you didn't see the value, but these are some very important things. And by the way, I want you to sit in on this course track. Um, and, and, and that's a very powerful tool to be able to propel it to say, okay, now we're going to make sure that you're there. So um, I think we're going to see more and more of it. I think that the technology and the ability to live stream, attend in various ways, you know, obviously physically the best way, um, but recorded tracks. I mean, it's, it's, we're going, you know, Professor John Otteson will be uh, holding his live lecture class, you know, for eleven ninety nine each, you know, just click and choose and PayPal directly. So, <laughs> but I think it's going to be great. <laughs> Well, I think that's a good note to, to end on, and I appreciate your everybody's input on this. It certainly uh, it was a, a very successful event, and, and I think we all got a lot out of it. So uh, with that, I uh, first want to thank everybody for being on the show today. Uh, first, I'll start with you, with Dave, Dave Hatz from AVI Systems. Thanks for being here. Uh, how can people get in touch with you, learn more about AVI, and uh, continue the conversation? So uh, avisystems.com would be the, you know, the best spot to head to. Um, if you're looking for me, I'm sorry, but uh, you know, dave.hats at avisystems.com. I'm on the tweets uh, at davehatsavi I'm on LinkedIn and stuff too. But again, AVI Systems is really a much better spot to go than trying to find me. You got it. Next, uh, Bernard Morgan from ICS Plus. Thanks for being here, Bernard. And how can people get in touch with you and learn more about what you're doing? Uh, the website is probably the best place to start uh, at icsplusonline.com or also you just e email at info at icsplusonline.com. Very good. Uh, John, John Addison, thanks for being here today. I uh, hope it was a good experience for you. I know that the audience, I'm sure, is familiar with you. They probably all have your cell phone number, but how, how would you prefer that everybody gets in touch with you? <laughs> well, of course, crestron.com. Uh, you can tweet me at any time at Otter XB. Yes, Otter the Critter XB. And of course, email J O T T E S E N at crestron.com. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. Thanks for being here. It was great. And last but not least, Uncle Richie, how can people get in touch with you, those that don't already know? <laughs> Obviously, Uncle Richie on the airwaves. Uh, you can find me at fergosadesign.com uh, on the Twitters uh, at R. Fragosa, obviously here with my compatriot Steve. Uh, also find me uh, on some other AV Nation shows, uh, Resi Week being one of the other ones. But uh, obviously, uh, just type my name into the Googles and something might pop up. Uh, hopefully, it's good. <laughs> hopefully, it's good. And if it's bad, it was John. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> if you have any issues, at John Odison at Crestron.com. So. <laughs> well, Thanks, uh, everyone. My name is Steve Greenblatt. I'm glad you were able to join us today. To reach me, you can uh, get me on social media at Steve Greenblatt or my co company, Control Concepts, at controlconcepts.net. But more importantly, check out the AV Nation website, avnation.tv. You can get this show. You can get a lot of other complimentary shows, weeklies and monthlies. They're all great. And uh, we're starting to see some, some crossover on some of these conversations. So I'm sure that you'll be able to fit right in and, and really uh, get, get uh, some more detail on the things that we're discussing. Uh, also, please uh, take a moment to leave a comment, leave a message, or rate us on iTunes. We'd love to hear from you. We'd love to be able to share this show to more people. Um, 
lastly, uh, Infocom is coming up and I have been getting a lot of social media tweets about the tweet up uh, and also about Navy selfies. So take a look in, and check that out. I'll be at Infocom uh, actually teaching a class on programming versus configuring what to know. So if you can uh, will can be there and uh, want to know more about that, uh, it'll be on the Tuesday before the show. And I'd uh, love to have you and love to meet some of our listeners. So with that, that'll be a wrap for today's show of A State of Control. 